Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up Gaming. Please hit that like button if you're a regular subscriber. Keep supporting us by leaving a comment down below and each month we will be giving away a free game to the most active subscriber. Hailing from a game that was widely thought to be one of the worst at the time, it somehow developed a serious following. When a crowdfunding campaign to bring it back, kicking and screaming into 3D, initially not in this way, people lapped it up. Thankfully, it evolved into the game we have today, which is a side-scrolling beat-em-up akin to Final Fight, with the shack magic, if there is such a thing. So, does this live up to its terrible predecessor in every way, or is this really going to settle the score of 94? Let's find out. The story of Shaq Fu is really well done. I was surprised by how the self-referentially bad story was handled. Having the voice of Big Shaq himself really adds to the late 90s cheesy vibes. And his tale of being abandoned as an orphan, raised, bullied and then trained to fight back pretty much encapsulates every stereotypical western market martial arts film ever. But then throw in a load of demons and you get a general flavour of Shaq Fu. Shaq here, time will soon arrive when your strength will be needed. Where? Right about now! Throughout the level, story dialogue is delivered by both Shaq and other cast members. This again had some laugh out loud moments, while being totally politically incorrect, which I love. An early reference to his master's sexuality becomes one of the funniest moments early in the game. I'm not the man you think I am. I knew it. You did? I seen you looking at me when I do them high kicks. Oh, oh, what? No, I, I'm just watching your technique. The later jokes are equally bad, and the game just bombards you with shack liners, as I've come to call them. Kazam! Size 22 equals force, baby. They just hit the mark for me. I'm not entirely sure what that means about my sense of humour, but the game felt seeped in nostalgia. The characters along the way are all parodies of modern celebrities, and the game even goes as far as stating, rather tongue-in-cheek before the game starts, that this is merely coincidental. Gotta avoid those class actions, am I right? Now without spoiling too much here, Shaquille is raised from an orphan. He's bullied and trained as I mentioned by Master Ye, in the ways of Wu Chang or Wu Ching or something like that. Then he must go out and save everyone from everything and some demons as well. Sounds like utter tripe, well yes, but the game delivers it with loving abandon. Story scores 14 out of 20. Shaq has a series of moves he can perform. His main attack using the Y button can be spammed relentlessly to unleash a flurry of fast attacks. Every so often, you auto-trigger a special that slows the camera and unleashes a serious shack whooping. These moments are sporadic, so when they do trigger, they feel great, particularly as they offer a few brief moments of respite. Pressing the A button unleashes a signature size 22 attack, referencing the legend's giant size 22 feet. These were slower and a little weaker than I would have liked. They also don't block all incoming attacks, whereas spamming your Y button holds most enemies at bay. The game thought of this though, and some enemies will require a combination of those two skills to overcome, such as these big boys. With the trigger buttons you can dash attack, which is really useful for quickly darting in and can also stun some enemies. Once stunned, you can use the LZ and RZ to grapple them in a few different ways, usually depending on the type of enemy. LZ and RZ are also used for picking up melee weapons, which offer the usual beat em up carnage while breaking after one or two hits. With the right stick or quick double tap in any direction, and you can do a roll. But this doesn't offer the Dark Souls style invulnerability which I found a little disappointing, but I can understand why the developers did this. You must use your Shack Smash attack by pressing B to unleash your pent-up power. Which is displayed on a meter below your health. 
Other staple beat-em-up elements are present and correct, including health pickups in breakable scenery, check, enemies that generally all look alike, check, throwable items, check, and of course it wouldn't be a beat-em-up without boss fights. These are introduced with great cutscenes, and the developers have at least put some thought into their design. An earlier boss will require you to dart in and out in quick attacks, while a later one may have you destroy generators to weaken him. All standard stuff, but it was good to see the constant shift of requirements to beat these bosses. As without that, the game would be incredibly repetitive after a while. Now about repetition, you don't even need to say it, this is an old school style beat em up and of course it's repetitive. Pleasingly, Shaq Fu does enough with its combat mechanics to keep the pace moving nicely. Attacks don't stop your flow, so to speak, and the game does a good job of making you feel powerful but not invincible. Moments referencing the great Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time were fantastic, and launching those foes into the TV was wonderful. And again, these are rare enough so as to keep the whole thing feeling moderately fresh. New enemies are introduced at a decent rate and the game does lots within the confines of its genre to stay engaging, such as this. Hell yes, I'm a diesel engine. Come get some! It isn't perfect and at times some parts did irritate me, as you're held at certain points until you have defeated wave after wave. I get that, but do it once or twice, don't let me fight five waves, only for me to accidentally slip into a pit of purple stuff and die. Oh well. Overall though, gameplay is fun and enjoyable, and while it lacks a multiplayer, which makes me sad, its six story-driven stages are long and varied, and it gets 17 out of 20. The graphics are a mixed bag. The game runs at a decent clip, but there are definite moments of lag here where things get really hectic on screen and the game just kind of judders. For the most part, you're looking at a smooth frame rate and incredibly responsive attacks. For a beat-em-up, that's an absolute win. Visuals are nice, from the colourful beginnings to the tropical second chapter, all the way through to hell. Everything looks colourful, vibrant and just pops on the Switch screen in docked and handheld modes. A little more disappointing are the character models. The clone armies are a standard for some beat-em-ups, I get that, but why? If it's to ensure that you can quickly identify enemy types and act accordingly, then alright, fine, I concede. If it's because changing the colour of the hat or coat is time consuming, then not as fine. Either way, there are a ton of enemies, and clones or not, they're a real mixed bag. Animations on some are really quite good, while others look like, well, I animated them, and trust me on this, they would look janky. Overall though, graphics score 15 out of 20. Why do you keep running off when the bad guys show up? We didn't raise enough money on Indiegogo for my combat animations. That sounds like... Yo, yeah, yeah! You going down? Rizzle! Guan Yu sent you, didn't he? Initial impressions are pretty good, from the terrible rapping on the opening screen, which just screams early 90s, to the voice acting of Shaq himself, which to be fair is pretty damn on point. The game sounds as you would hope, Enemies all scream at the right times and the constant one-liners and story dialogues from the big man keep everything interesting. Are you one of the new Ghostbusters? In-game music was a little too generic for my liking, to the point where on some levels I would have rather not had it there at all. It just didn't quite hit the mark for me sometimes. Hey kids, don't take a ride on the high fructose slide. Thankfully, the game does a good job with sound effects, things sound chunky, and as you smash an enemy's face into the cold, hard ground, you can't help but smile. Overall, sound and music score 13 out of 20. And this brings me on to value, and if you purchased NBA Playgrounds, this game is bloody incredible value. It's completely free. If you didn't know that, get onto the App Store now and download it.
Now, if you didn't, the game retails at £17.99 or $19.99, and it's well worth that in my opinion. I'm looking at the recent beat-em-ups I've played, particularly on Switch, and while this is no Streets of Red, it certainly beats the others that I can think of. Hmm. Production values are high, controls are tight, and the game will make you laugh out loud with some jokes to make the politically correct contingency cry and be instantly triggered. For me, the game well and truly deserves its place in a beat-em-up fan's collection and has certainly achieved its goal of thoroughly putting the past behind it. Value scores 15 out of 20, unless obviously you're getting it for free and then it's 20 out of 20. Shaq Fu was a surprise to me. I thought being offered free was a bad omen indeed. Thankfully, as often seems to be the case in my old age, I was wrong about this one. It offers a tightly ridiculous story, some really cool power-ups and special moves. All the staple of a 90s beat-em-up with a sprinkle of Shaq Fu. It scores a final switch-up score of 74%. Cheers guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review, I was really surprised by this and hopefully some of you will pick it up and let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya!